The flight uh, carrying uh, the remains of 45 Indians who lost their lives in Kuwait has landed at the Kochi airport. Uh, it is uh, the chief minister of the state, uh, Pinaraya Vijayan, who is there at the airport, as is Suresh Gopi, the only uh, uh, BJP uh, MP of uh, the state. And of course, uh, this is uh, uh, after that fire that broke out on Wednesday in Kuwait that claimed 45 Indian lives and uh, the other lives uh, that were lost uh, were uh, Filipino uh, that also lost their lives. Uh, the fire apparently started uh, at the bottom, uh, the ground floor. Uh, this is inside the guards room uh, located on the ground floor is uh, what might have caused the fire. That is, the initial reports are suggesting that it could have been an electric short circuit in the room of the guard of the building. Now, the building that housed uh, over 196 workers, out of which uh, we are talking about 175 of them were Indians. Uh, the victims included 23 from Kerala, 7 from Tamil Nadu, 3 from Uttar Pradesh, 2 from Orisha, 1 each from Bihar, Punjab, Karnataka, Maharashtra, West Bengal, as well as Jharkhand and Haryana. A majority of the victims work for the NBTC, a company in Kuwait, which is the largest construction firm. The building which caught fire also belongs to that company, the NBTC Group. To get more on this, we have Sam Daniel joining us. Sam, take us uh, uh, through, uh, you know, the details of this company. I mean, they, they have offered a compensation. Now they're saying of 8 lakhs to the families of the deceased. This is uh, co-owned uh, by an Indian from Kerala itself, a 69-year-old businessman who uh, co-owns this company. He has been responsible uh, for, uh, you know, uh, housing so many workers in one particular building. I mean, doesn't that violate the security and safety uh, from what we are hearing, initial reports that are suggesting that there were about two dozen gas cylinders on the ground floor itself. Uh, there were, uh, you know, materials such as uh, cardboard and plastics that were that was used as partitions to separate the workers in those very cramped rooms uh, uh, you know they were uh, as far as the rooftop is concerned uh, the doors were locked uh, which did not allow the workers to kind of escape to the rooftop we know that some of them even tried to jump out of the window in order to escape the fire but but unfortunately died That's right, Divya. This particular company, NBTC, into construction is co-owned by a person from Kerala with strong roots in Kerala, Abraham. And uh, uh, at the moment, initial or preliminary investigation reports suggest there were large-scale violations. Number one, the fire began on the ground floor where several cylinders had exploded following a gas leak that triggered fire. There was uh, a severe smoke blowing from that and the fire soon spread to the other floors. There were also many barriers in terms of partitions, in terms of the access to the terrace uh, kept locked and the workers who were largely sleeping at that time as it was well, about, well, well before early morning, they were caught unaware and many had to even jump from the, 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 through the windows to to escape and that also had led many to sustain severe injuries. So several violations in terms of non-compliance, in terms of overcrowding, in terms of violating safety precautions and as we speak the Kuwait authorities have taken into custody at least three members from the group and they are investigating and this in a sense underscores the unsafe conditions in which Indians in Middle East live especially where they go for work seeking better opportunities some also say sometimes workers themselves prefer to stay in such crowded uh, conditions because they could save some money the rentals are cheaper there and that's another side to the story and we'll have to wait and watch of course the the employees have given a, comp a, pack a compensation package to those who have lost their lives but that's a poor consolation to the families who have lost their near and dear ones. And many say it's time the Indian government should leverage its good ties with countries in the Middle East and make sure the employers, the recruiters would follow the norms and comply with the local uh, rules so that largely this kind of unsafe conditions could be prevented and this kind of tragedies could be averted in the future.
Sam, uh, from uh, what we understand is that these companies provide accommodation to their workers. You know, they do not earn enough to be able to, you know, even uh, rent uh, uh, an accommodation in these Middle Eastern countries. From what we are hearing is the company, uh, uh, you know, where these workers were working also owned that building. So basically that meant that they have this building to provide accommodation uh, to their employees. But uh, the, the conditions in which they kept them, the, nu the number of people who lived in one particular building, uh, the building was just six stories high and had close to about 200 people who were living and they were uh, obviously it was highly cramped and uh, you know the safety precautions uh, were not looked into uh, it perhaps was an old building uh, from what we are hearing and from what we can see uh, take us also through uh, you know we hear that dna testing was required in order uh, to determine the identity of the victims what about the ones who've been injured are there some of the indians uh, out of the ones who've been injured who are say in various hospitals The focus is now shifting to the condition of the injured uh, workers who are being treated in a few hospitals in Kuwait, uh, Divya. Both the central government, the Kerala government and the, the Tamil Nadu government are working through the Indian embassy there to make sure that the best possible treatment would be given to those people who are in ICU. And uh, in the case of Tamil Nadu and Kerala, besides the government support, they are also seeking help from the local Tamil and Malayali associations to reach out to these uh, injured people, to provide them uh, medical support, to take them to other better hospitals if required and provide other moral support they may require. But uh, authorities say they are doing their best to, uh, to, to, to treat them well and to save them. Since it's a burn injury, certainly there are concerns about their uh, uh, conditions now. And uh, in terms of the relief or compensation, the Kerala government has announced uh, a 5 lakh package uh, and several other non-governmental agencies. They've also come forward to give another additional package of 7 lakh rupees to each of the families who lost their dear ones. In the case of Tamil Nadu government, the chief minister has ordered a 5 lakh relief package. And as, as we speak, the minister, Jinji Mastan, or Senji Mastan, who is in charge of the non-resident Tamils welfare, is also in Cochin trying to coordinate their mortal remains reaching the homes of their families soon after. Seven of them from Tamil Nadu in this case. Right, uh, Sam, uh, when you talk about uh, the compensation that is uh, being announced, uh, of course, uh, the Prime Minister has uh, announced uh, 2 lakh rupees uh, to the families of the deceased, 50,000 to those who've been injured. Are uh, you talking about, uh, you know, at the state level, whether it is uh, uh, the Chief Minister of Kerala or the Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu who have also uh, announced uh, compensation? What we are hearing is that the, the company uh, responsible for these workers, where these workers uh, were working, has also announced 8 lakh rupee compensation. And then the Amir of Kuwait has also also announced a, a, a cash a, a compensation as well. That's right. It will actually, in a sense, supplement the financial security of these families who have lost their breadwinner. And uh, we'll have to wait and see whether ultimately there would be justice for those who were responsible for this kind of an unsafe conditions there. And uh, as we speak now, authorities say they've arranged ambulances ready. The Procedure will not be long since the flight has already landed. It's just a matter of some some more time for the chief minister to lead the pay uh, to lead uh, in terms of paying their final respects to the mortal remains, and then ambulances carrying each of the mortal remains of these workers will travel towards their home, uh, both in Kerala and in Tamil Nadu. Right, uh, Sam, uh, as we can see, uh, visuals on our screen of that flight that landed at about 10.30 this morning, just an hour back uh, with the mortal remains of the 45 Indians who lost their lives in that fire that broke out on Wednesday in Kuwait, uh, in a building uh, that housed close to 200 workers. Uh, most of them worked for this particular company, which is a construction company. Uh, the building was also owned by that construction company. Uh, this is uh, uh, out of the 45 people who have lost their lives. We're talking about the 45 Indians who lost their lives, uh, 24 uh, from uh, Kerala uh, alone, uh, 7 from Tamil Nadu, uh, 1 uh, from Karnataka and also they hailed from other uh, states as well which includes uh, Maharashtra as well as uh, West Bengal, Odisha, Bihar, Punjab along with Jharkhand 
and Haryana as well. So uh, the mortal remains uh, that have been brought first uh, to uh, Kochi. Uh, from here, uh, arrangements are being made uh, that uh, plane will also be brought to Delhi later today. Uh, for now, uh, it is uh, the chief minister of the state as well as uh, Suresh Gopi who are there at the uh, at the airport uh, to make arrangements uh, for the mortal remains of the victims of uh, that tragedy that erupted on Wednesday in which uh, uh, 45 lives have been claimed due to a fire that erupted in Kuwait. Sam, if you could just uh, uh, you know tell us what really caused the fire, what are the, what is the initial report suggesting? I mean, we don't know for sure yet, but uh, uh, from what we are hearing is that the fire could have actually started on the ground floor. That's what uh, preliminary investigations reveal, Devya. Uh, it says... Uh, there was a possible gas leak from cylinders kept on the ground floor and that triggered the fire. That led to multiple explosions of gas cylinders that aggravated the fire which soon spread from the ground floor to other floors. And it was dawn and many were sleeping. They were caught uh, off guard. And by the time they could realize it was too late and uh, the access to the terrace was also shut or locked in that sense, so they couldn't even move up to a place of safety. Many had to jump out from higher flows, uh, injuring themselves and putting them into more uh, in terms of uh, injuries. And uh, ultimately, 49 were burnt to death. The condition of those workers, the bodies were quite charred. It was a challenge to identify them. It took a DNA testing and uh, now officials say all the 45 Indians who died have been identified. There will be no more delays uh, in Cochin now that the flight has landed. And uh, it's a terrible, terrible uh, accident. And it again, it underscores the unsafe conditions in which uh, Indian workers, particularly in the Middle East, live. And this particular building is owned by N NBTC, the, the, the company that's into construction in in, in Kuwait and uh, the, one of the co-owners is also from Kerala, Abraham with a strong roots uh, to the, to, to, uh, with strong roots in Kerala and uh, conflicting reports, uh, in, in, uh, the trend there many say is for the uh, employers to provide accommodation because they could be earning less and they may not be able to rent themselves. The other report we're hearing is that sometimes workers themselves prefer to live in these uh, accommodations given by the owners. It's free, it's cheap, in that way they'll be able to uh, send a larger sum of money to their families back home. Sam, so they don't mind uh, living they in don't such have a private, in the overcrowded accommodations. That's the other side of the story. Sam, perhaps they don't yes, have a choice in the matter. True. Perhaps they, and, they're uh, not given an option, uh, you know. Uh, uh, from what we understand is that the companies need to provide accommodation uh, to uh, these workers. Uh, they, they uh, you know, feel that this is normal because what they see is that their other co-workers are living in the same conditions, uh, which is why, uh, you know, when they're thrown into a building which is cramped with people, not been given any kind of safety and security norms which are in place, uh, uh, they probably perhaps feel this is normal because uh, they see other people doing it as well. And they... Uh, you know, perhaps make those compromises in order to send back as much money as they can save uh, to their loved ones back home. That's right. It's a larger problem and uh, it's time, many say, that the Indian government uh, you should leverage its close ties with uh, Gulf countries and make sure that uh, the companies that engage them, that hire them and the agencies that recruit them would comply with norms and they would not really take the workers for a ride like this and ensure they live in safe conditions so that at least in future this kind of tragedy can be averted to a large extent. Right, uh, Sam, also perhaps they don't have a say in the matter regarding uh, their accommodation, their stay, uh, the safety rules in place uh, and of course they have gone there uh, to make the maximum money that they can in order to fund their families back home. Uh, the majority of the people uh, uh, there, in uh, out of the workers there, uh, of course uh, are uh, from South India. We're talking about uh, Kerala, uh, Tamil Nadu and Karnataka, also uh, hailing from other uh, states including Haryana as well as Maharashtra, West Bengal. Uh, and other states as well. Uh, you know, uh, Sam, just take us through uh, uh, the fact that, uh, you know, we did see uh, that uh, 
uh, the the representation as far as india is concerned we saw uh, there was mr singh who was sent there uh, in order to expedite the process to get the mortal remains back how is it that the health minister of kerala was not allowed to go That's right. While the central government, Divya, had deployed Union Minister of State for External Affairs, uh, Kirti Vardhan Singh, to Kuwait to oversee the rescue efforts there, the treatment there, and also to oversee the repatriation of the mortal remains back home, a Kerala Health Minister also uh, tried to fly to Kuwait, but uh, the Kerala government says that Veena was denied permission by the central government, although the purpose of her visit was to coordinate the repatriation from kerala and to make sure the families would get the mortal remains faster those injured there would be given uh, best possible treatment and if a minister is present there it helps in expediting things uh, as they could take decisions quicker but uh, the kerala government says the union government did not allow her to fly and uh, in that context the kerala chief minister pinarayi vijayan has said it's time the central government and the state governments ought to work in tandem having in mind to help the bereaved families at this moment of grief and uh, there's no response so far from the central government why they denied permission for the minister from kerala to visit uh, kuwait at this time of uh, a crisis a calamity day uh, but this has happened in the past too when the ukraine uh, russia war began there were hundreds of students from different parts of the country largely from tamil nadu as well doing medicine they were struck and at that time the tamil nadu government too had tried to deploy a few ministers who could expedite uh, safe passage of those uh, stranded students back home but the central government did not allow them at that time it had argued that in these situations it's the center's responsibility to coordinate with the foreign nations and expedite uh, getting people back home safe and if every state ought to send it will be difficult and not every country would really be willing to deal with individual states of a large country like india it's in that context at that time the central government had denied permission for ministers from india to travel to ukraine or to areas in russia to expedite uh, return of those students so some one 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 can imagine the kind of uh, uh, reason why probably the central government had denied but we wait we should wait for an official response kuwait or any middle east country is known to have a large population of uh, Kerala is working there and it's understandable that the Kerala government would want to send their own minister to make sure people feel reassured there'll be a larger easier connect with the communities there who are facing distress there in hospitals or uh, back home the families waiting for to hear what happened to the near and dear ones it's in that context the Kerala government says it's important uh, the minister Veena ought to have been allowed to fly to Kuwait